I think when you look at Manchester United at the moment, uh, it's not all doom and gloom. And I think there is a little bit of uh, over the topness to the way that some people in the media and some rival fans talk about us. I mean, factually, we're the most informed team in the Premier League in the last five Premier League games, winning four. But look, look at some of those sides, Fulham and and uh, I even forget, well, Luton at home. It's forgettable football. It's boring football. It's survival football. And I think for Manchester United fans, we're probably looking at this going, like Ten Hag, it's pretty decent to be within touching distance of top four and sixth in the league after what has been an abysmal start to the season. I think December's massive. We've got three away games in six days when we come back with Galatasaray in between. We've got Liverpool away and West Ham later in the month. We've got Chelsea and Villa at home. So I think United fans are very much saying, let's have a chat on New Year's Eve. And uh, if it's not going well, at least we can party because it's just December's going to be what it's all about. I definitely think Eric Ten Hag deserves more slack. When you look at it, he's got more points in his first 50 Premier League games than Jurgen Klopp. And I think recency bias has been a problem because you see people like De Zerbi, Emery and Ange doing really well this season. And those managers in the main have been in less time than Ten Hag. So people look at Ten Hag and go, well, while he's not, why is he not performing? But last season, he did perform. And that's why he has that record that's better than Klopp over his first 50 games. So there's two problems with it. One, what we were doing last season is not happening this year. So where's the momentum? Emery took momentum from last season into this season. Why haven't we? It can't just be injury. And two, yeah, we might have more points than Jurgen Klopp had after 50 games. But we know where Jurgen Klopp is now. He's won a Premier League. He's won a Champions League. I'd say I'd rather be in Liverpool's position under Klopp than Man United's position under Ten Hag after 50 games. On the other hand, I think there's a bit of an overreaction negatively towards Ten Hag, and, and he does deserve a bit of slack. I think when you look at the Premier League at the moment, Manchester United are sixth. Uh, there is the potential for fifth place to get a Champions League spot this year. So I, I look at Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal, and I think they are the benchmark, and I don't think Manchester United will be competing with them. I'd like to think we can, but probably not this season. But beyond that, I look at it and go, well, who's the definite fourth place? Who's the definite fifth place? And Aston Villa are doing great at the moment. Spurs were doing great. And we've seen how quick that can change with a few injuries. Aston Villa are the same as Spurs. They don't have massive depth. I don't really see a definite concern as to why Manchester United can't get fourth, let alone fifth, other than the form we've, we've, we've shown this season. This is a natural change that I think everybody could see it coming. And whether it's a gym with 25% or whether it's Qatar buying all of the club, I think we all knew that a change in the CEO had to happen. Uh, I look at some of his decision making on and off the pitch. I thought the way he handled the Mason Greenwood situation in the summer was appalling. And he, he maybe should have lost his job for that. That involved things beyond football and it, and it was it was handled badly. Then you look at the, the market, the transfer market, the success on the pitch. It's logical that a CEO has to go and he won't be missed by anybody and he will certainly get a big payoff. I definitely think Spurs bubble has burst. Uh, I think it's logical though. Uh, I don't think it's anything that Spurs fans uh, feel need to feel victimised about. I think they've had a fantastic season. Uh, it's funny, I was I was um, talking on, on my podcast this week and I said, if I was grading Spurs season this year, I'd give them an A, even now, even with the two losses, because I didn't, I didn't think they would get top eight based on the last three years. I didn't know a lot about Ange. I think he has been given a free ride in comparison to someone like Ten Hag, but... We know how the media works. It's always been like this, whether it's England managers or whatever. You come in and you do well and, you know, you get built up and then they'll knock you down. It's it's, it's like a soap opera. So he's he's now going to have to go through that part where he's been ridiculed for that high line against Chelsea and they couldn't hold on against Wolves. I think Roy Keane, for me, uh, being from Nottingham as a young kid, um, and obviously Roy Keane started off his career there, um, I was always aware of him being a young player coming over from Ireland because you get like the Nottingham Evening Post and that and you didn't get anything other than Notts County and Nottingham Forest news. So you'd see Roy Keane and his, his evolution as a player. I mean, he started off, he was always very fiery and aggressive. And obviously at Manchester United, they matured him into this leader and the most decorated captain in Premier League history. But as a player and as a leader, I mean, he's probably my favourite player. I always put him in my top three. He's probably my favourite player um, of all time because it's a player I've seen and it's also a player that sort of probably doesn't exist anymore. 
I think four, uh, I'll probably go with one that might be controversial to some people because it's not the overhead kick for Rooney. Um, it's actually a game, I think it was 2005 against Newcastle. He was, in, he was arguing with the referee, really aggressive, and then the ball just bounced in front of him and he just smacked it in past Shea Given. It was absolutely brilliant volley in front of the Stretford end. Um, I remember Cantona uh, against Sunderland. I'm struggling to find remember what year that was, certainly in the 90s, um, where I think he played a one-two with McClare and then just dinked it over him and just sort of put his chest out and just looked around like that. I really liked um, the 2013 volley, uh, Rooney to Van Persie against Villa in, in the game that basically won us the league. It was just just pure technique and the assist was brilliant from Rooney and the finish was was just exquisite from, from, from Van Persie. As for goals against, uh, funnily enough, I do remember a talk sport presenter scoring an absolute worldie in a Carabao Cup or whatever it was called then quarterfinal um, for Palace, Darren Ambrose. Absolutely brilliant goal. I mean, I don't know how many good players Man United had on the pitch that day, but I just remember it was an absolute cracker. And I think that was into the Stretford end. And then just, I remember Ronaldo's hat trick, um, 2003, uh, um, not Cristiano, uh, R9. I think my three top players of all time, it changes sometimes, but there is a consistency to it. So I'm just going to go with the three that I, I consistently pick. Uh, certainly Roy Keane, I've mentioned him before. David Beckham, I liked for different reasons. I mean, I remember even having a hairstyle like him when he got sent off against Argentina. I was probably one of the only people in the country who stuck up for him. Um, he was just, uh, I just loved the way he um, he played the game and I don't, I don't think he was most the most technical, best player, t naturally talented player, but technically he just had a wand of a right foot and I, I loved Beckham. And then Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, I think. It's close. There's a few others, but I think I'd go Cristiano Ronaldo because I just think for, for two or three years he was the best player in the world. As for players that have been annoying over the years, I mean, there's been a few individual performances. I remember Torres, uh, uh, Fernando Torres at, at Old Trafford scoring a hat trick. But I think consistently I've gone for three from different eras. In the current era, I think Mo Salah is ridiculously consistent against United. He always seems to score. Um, probably a little bit further back, Thierry Henry. Uh, I was always scared of him. I, d I didn't particularly like him as a player because he had that arrogance and va, -va boom But, I mean, he was just always a thorn in the side of Manchester United. And then a little bit before that, another player I, I never really liked because he wouldn't sign for us but did score a lot of goals against us um, was Alan Shearer. And, of course, he played... Um, in a team that won the league from us in 95 for Blackburn. So, yeah, I'd go with those three. There's been a few, but I think those three across the, the sort of Premier League era.